Hello, how's everyone doing? Uh, wow, I look uh, younger there, it's a few years ago, I guess. But I am Michael Gibson, uh, I am the co-founder of 1517 Fund. Um, we, oh, whoops, I had a uh, generative AI develop some images for what a network state college would look like in the guise of Norman Rockwell. Uh, and I was asked to speak on how to build a parallel institution to the current university system. I have some background in this. I thought it'd be a professor of philosophy. I was working towards a PhD and I, and I dropped out. Um, but even though I dropped out for other reasons, there were already problems accumulating that we all know about. But just to rehearse, you know, we're close to $1.7 trillion in student debt in the United States. People either crippling under that debt or taking well-paying but boring jobs to pay it off. It's a hot political issue. Uh, the cost of college over the last 40 years has increased by more than 1,000%, and that's in real terms. So it's getting more expensive and people are taking debt to pay for it. And yet, uh, in recent history, even though college seems to pay more than high school alone, uh, nevertheless, you know, the incomes that recent graduates earn aren't that much higher and sometimes lower than they used to be. Um, so, you know, in technology, we're, we're used to seeing better, faster, cheaper. Uh, with education, and in particular higher ed, we have the opposite. Things are getting more expensive. Uh, in some ways, they're getting worse. Uh, and people are going into debt. Uh, on top of that, if that weren't bad enough, now they've become, uh, in the words of Balaji, woke madrasas. Uh, there's indoctrination on campus. Uh, they tell you, you can look at the mission statement of any college from Harvard on down, and they will tell you their mission is to help you to think critically, to become leaders of tomorrow, and yet uh, here we have, you know, most colleges, you know, some 4,000 colleges in the U.S., and yet somehow there's only one point of view. Um, all of this was, you know, it's certainly uh, trouble now, but it was apparent that this was a problem back in 2010. I was on the founding team of the Teal Fellowship. I never thought, I told you my background, I, I never thought I would be involved in the world of Silicon Valley, but I met Peter Thiel uh, through Pottery Friedman, who spoke earlier. Uh, I interviewed for a role uh, on his hedge fund. He uh, asked me if I would help him teach a class at Stanford Law School on philosophy and tech. And I <laughs> said yes to that job because it was so cool. Uh, but I showed up to work the first day, and I can tell you the date because it was my first day of work, September 27th, 2010. It was a Monday. I came to the office. It was exactly as you would imagine in a TV show for a hedge fund. Uh, there were Bloomberg terminals stacked you know, in triptychs. Uh, there was a stock ticker, CNBC on the screen, and I'm sitting at this desk and I'm thinking, how the hell did I end up here? When my colleague Jim O'Neill came to uh, the desk and picked me up, he says, hey, we got to go to Peter's house. I said, why? He said, well, on the plane ride back from New York last night, we came up with this idea. We're calling it the anti road Scholarship. I said, great. I went to Oxford. <laughs> That's where I dropped out of. I hated Rhodes Scholars. They were insufferable, credentialist greyhounds chasing mechanical lures of prestige. Uh, so I was in. I was like, great, let's go. What is this? He's like, well, we're going to pay people to leave school. OK, great. Um, so we get to Peter's house. Peter comes bounding down the stairs. Uh, he gets you know, his coat on. His assistant is telling him the schedule. We get in a car. It was uh, TechCrunch Disrupt that day. Peter was scheduled to be interviewed by Sarah Lacey, and uh, he had decided that this would be the best time to announce this program. Why? Well, five days later on Friday, this is so long ago now, the movie The Social Network was set to come out. And in the script that had been leaked by Aaron Sorkin, you know, Peter knew he was going to be portrayed negatively, uh, and certainly Zuckerberg was going to be portrayed negatively. And so he thought he'd change the conversation by doing something bold. So I'm in the car, we're like, what do we call this thing? We're on our way to the convention center. I'm backstage. You know, people are trying to pitch Peter their idea, but we're focusing on, okay, well, what do we call this thing? How much money? Peter's on stage. And on YouTube, you can watch the interview. 
uh, if you find it, and you will see that Peter is talking in the present tense. He's saying, we're taking application, we're running this program. It was already in existence. Uh, and so that was my first day of work. I went home and called my parents. I was like, wow, this is my first day. What's tomorrow going to be like? <laughs> we, there were two newsworthy conditions for the fellowship. Uh, number one was you had to be 19 and under to apply. And number two uh, was that you had to not be enrolled in school to receive the grant. You know, I, I highly recommend anyone here read the new Walter Isaacson biography of Elon Musk, but you can also YouTube uh, interviews with Musk. Uh, you know, the book is extraordinary. He, Elon gave <laughs> complete access. He even gave the emails and phone numbers of his ex-wives and girlfriends. It's an incredible, really gripping story. But one thing that stood out to me was something Musk calls the algorithm for, this is how he thinks about production, assembly lines, it's a five-step process. And the first step in the process is, uh, what are the requirements? And challenge them. So with SpaceX, there were all these components, and nothing had been innovated in aerospace in decades. And they're trying to drive down the cost of making rockets, and someone would say, hey, we need this component because you know, the NASA or the military says it's a required component. And then he began to challenge people, find me the person who created that component or who created that requirement, rather. And then if there was no good answer as to why it existed, he removed it, and that's step two in his algorithm. If, if the requirement can't be justified, remove it. And he says, you never know if you're doing enough until you, put 10, until you have to put 10% back in. So I thought about this with respect to the fellowship, is that's exactly what we did. Harvard requires you to take 32 credits to graduate, some 16 in a major, electives. We decided none of that is required to find success in life, especially when it comes to working in technology. But that didn't convince anyone. Right away, uh, we had our haters. Jacob Weisberg took to Newsweek and Slate. You can't see it in that text, but he said we were creating the white man's version of the NBA. Harvard's uh, former president, Larry Summers, a couple years later, uh, Treasury Secretary of the United States. He said, and this is one of my favorite quotes, the Teal Fellowship is the most misdirected philanthropy of the decade. But now, here we are 13 years later, what are the results? Young man Dylan Field created Figma in 2012. We helped him launch it. Recently, that made news last year because they were bought by Adobe for $20 billion. Uh, just two weeks ago, Atlassian bought Loom for nearly a billion. Uh, we helped Vitalik launch Ethereum. Uh, Luminar went public, founded by Austin Russell, multi-billion dollar company, makes uh, sensors for driverless cars. Uh, CB Insights ran an analysis recently on the Teal Fellowship. And, you know, this uh, best accelerator in the world not called Y Combinator. 11 companies worth more than a billion dollars out of uh, 150 Teal Fellowships. Um, Pretty extraordinary. Um, you know, Peter has a famous interview question where he, 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 he tests people by saying, what truth do you believe in that the rest of the world thinks is false? Well, I believe in child labor is good. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote a book about this inside account of the Teal Fellowship and what we did. Uh, originally, a few publishers didn't want to publish it because I quote literally, one of them said, uh, Peter Thiel is evil, anyone who works for him is evil, uh, and we can't po possibly publish this. You know, six or seven others said, I went to Yale and studied English literature, I don't believe this. <laughs> uh, but nevertheless, small publishing house encounter put it out. I think it's a hoot. Goes into some of the background on, on everything you just saw. So what's next? In 2015, I realized I could be uh, making money and extending the mission of the Teal Fellowship. I started a fund called 1517. That's our geeky historical reference to the Protestant Reformation. Um, Martin Luther originally nailed his 95 theses to the church door because he was protesting the sale of indulgences. And the Roman church would sell these. They told you it could save your soul uh, if you bought one or your friend's souls. And so we decided that, you know, we don't believe in indulgences. There's a corrupt institution today that's selling a piece of paper and telling you it can save your soul. It's Yale or fail. 
It's called the college diploma, and we think that's bullshit too. Thank you. Uh,